The time is now. Everyday lives, eternal significance. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the snake said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Today, at the beginning of December, we reflect on the beginning of everything. Time itself began as God created the universe, the planets, the stars and us. The word genesios, from which we get genesis, means beginnings. And at the beginning of life on earth, we encounter the first woman, Eve. Having famously been tempted and plunged the world into a nightmare of consequences with her husband, Adam, Eve hears from God that she will also play a part in redeeming the world. She's told that her seed will destroy the devil and his power. We read, I will put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman between her offspring and yours. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The coming of Christ, the one born of a woman who would destroy the power and work of the evil one, had been prophesied right at the beginning of the Old Testament. God's work of preparation begins in his perfect timing. Just as everything seemed to be collapsing in total failure, God's perfect creation spoiled by the first people to enjoy it, he reveals a plan of rescue and restoration. The season of Advent is a time of reflection on Jesus coming into the world and we reflect on how God has been doing his work of preparation in hearts throughout history, making things ready for the incarnation of Christ. Both men and women were caught up in that story of preparation. Many never knew in their lifetime the significance of the role they were playing in salvation history, but their participation is a powerful witness to the truth that God uses ordinary people like you and me in his extraordinary redemptive plans for the world. And that even in times of terrible darkness and sorrow, failure and unbelief, God can be at work in us, bringing something wonderful to pass. Stuck in the here and now as she was, Eve could not have known precisely what her role would be in the line of the Messiah. But as the recipient of this prophecy and the mother of the human race, she played an important part. As time unfolded, God would intervene and weave together his plan of salvation. Yet we're so impatient, we want promises to be fulfilled right away and we find it hard to wait through unfolding time 
for the breakthrough Kairos moment. This is more obviously true when we're younger, we impatiently long for the presence of Christmas Day and our birthdays. As we get older, this impatience can be equally desperate, but more discreetly hidden. Wanting to see answers to our prayers for the healing or salvation of family members, wanting a new job, wanting to get married or have a child, wanting our debts to be finally paid off. God sees all the longings of our hearts and our desperation for the waiting to be over, but sometimes he's speaking to us in the time of waiting. Will we hold on to him in unfolding time? Will we persevere until that Kairos moment? Are we willing to trust him even if, like Eve, we never live to see the fulfilment of what we've hoped for? Perhaps something in your church, a personal difficulty or a recent news item has made you despair. Don't pretend that things are better than they are, but in the midst of the darkness now, can you hold on to the truth of Jesus' light and love? As you remember the promise to Eve that her seed would crush the serpent's head, allow faith in Jesus to rise in your heart. In prayer, now, be realistic about the darkness, disappointments, failures and sorrows that you face today. And over all of these, pray for the light of Christ to dawn. Let's pray in the words of Saint Augustine. You are Christ, my Holy Father, my tender God, my great King, my Good Shepherd, my only Master, my best helper, my most beautiful and my beloved, my living bread, my priest forever, my leader to my country, my true light, my holy sweetness, my straight way, my excellent wisdom, my pure simplicity, my peaceful harmony, my entire protection, my good portion, my everlasting salvation.